we're going to be discussing today is Boyle's Law. In fact, we're going to apply this to a little situation over here in which we have a piston which goes down and it compresses a gas. And all of this happens at a constant temperature. Now, what is actually Boyle's Law? To answer this, let's think about the ideal gas law equation, PV is equal to nRT. Now what I want you guys to imagine is that we're keeping the temperature of this process to be a constant, so T is equal to a constant. Additionally, we're not really allowing any gas to leak out, so additionally, N is also equal to a constant, so it's the same number of moles. Uh, let's put all of those under sort of one bracket like that. So these are our conditions. Okay, well, what are the consequences of that? PV will then be equal to N, which is a constant. R is just 8.31, that's the universal gas constant, and T is also a constant. So that whole right-hand side is equal to a constant. <coughs> uh, check. There are two ways in which we can really, or further two ways that we can write down Boyle's law. One is that pressure is actually inversely proportional to the volume, and we can see that because this is going to be equal to some constant, and we can call it K for example, it doesn't really matter what we call it, divided by the volume. So pressure is inversely proportional to the volume at a constant temperature. A different way we can use that quite often in um, in some mathematical calculations would be to rewrite the following as P1 V1 being equal to P2 multiplied by V2. The reason for that is because if PV is equal to a constant that means that if we multiply the pressure and the volume that is going to remain exactly the same um, at the final stages of the problem. In practice that means that for quite a lot of uh, uh, quite a lot of situations in real life Boyle's law actually applies. I mean if you have a piston this could be something like a syringe or it could be part of some mechanical component and uh, let's say that we have a gas which is trapped over here inside of um, inside of this container. We can see that no gas is, is leaking and uh, if no gas is leaking, that means that N is equal to a constant. Additionally, we're keeping the temperature to be the same. For example, this could be the room temperature in which we're making this um, the, this experiment. As we bring the pistol, uh, the piston down, we can see that if the volume is decreasing, so if the volume goes down, then that means that the pressure has got to increase. So, in other words, as the piston lowers, the volume decreases, and the pressure increases. Okay, well, let's have a look at a few graphical relationships. The first graph that sometimes comes up in exam is a pressure against volume graph. Now if we were to sketch the relationship of pressure against volume, remember pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So this looks similar to the way the mathematical function y is equal to uh, 1 over x looks like. So this uh, stems from the fact that pressure is equal to some constant divided by the, the volume. For each of those points, the um, let's say if I take a P1 here and a V1 there, the ones there multiplied P1 times V1, you should say V1 here, is going to be a constant. So uh, this is going to be true for every other point. Let's say that this over here is P2 and uh, this over here is V2. So this property P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2 will be true for all points in the graph. Uh, 
Additionally, we can perform linear analysis in Boyle's law mostly by using this um, this graph over here with pressure on the y-axis and 1 over volume on the x-axis. The reason for that is because PV is equal to nRT which is equal to a constant so P is going to equal nRT over V. Um, this uh, part of the fraction here that I've just highlighted that's just a constant. So um, a, one way of Rewriting the following equation would be that pressure is equal to nRT times 1 over the volume. We can perform y equals mx plus c analysis, so we can say that y is equal to mx plus c. And uh, if that's the case, we can also add a little zero above, and we can clearly see that pressure is on the y-axis. So just here we can see that 1 over the volume, let's use a different color for that, 1 over the volume is on the x-axis and um, additionally our graph should pass through the origin. So our intercept C is going to be 0. So our graph is going to look something like this. So let's just do a quick sketch over here. So it's going to look like so. Now, kind of interesting, the gradient is actually equal to nRT. So this over here is our gradient, which is uh, yet a, another different color for the uh, gradient. So if we were to increase the amount of substance N, or if we were to increase the temperature T, that means that our gradient is uh, going to increase as well. And um, you can just illustrate this like so. Let's use a different color for this and let's make sure that we go straight through the origin. So uh, higher gradient in this case will correspond. So a higher gradient in this case means higher temperature or higher amount of substance. Could also mean both, depending on what the situation is. For our example above, um, there is uh, no way any gas would would leak out because uh, it's contained in a container. However, there may be a different example that you're dealing with. Okay folks, now hopefully the, the theory behind Boyle's Law makes sense. Let's apply this to a few past paper questions. Okay folks, let's have a look at our example. So this is question six from OCR Physics A, June 2013, Newtonian World Paper. Stating words, Boyle's Law. Well, as we said before, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So pressure is inversely proportional to volume. As we discussed, this only applies when n and t in the PV is equal to nRT equation are, are, are constant. So um, let's make sure that we say that. So that's only true um, for a uh, fixed amount of gas. At a constant temperature. There we go, so that's perfect. Let's have a look at the next one. Figure 6.1 is, is a graph showing the relationship between the quantities involved in Boyle's Law. Label the axes appropriately. Aha, uh -huh. so this is very, very similar to the theory I showed you guys a moment ago. Because this is a linear relationship, we know that uh, P is going to be on the, um, on the y-axis and uh, we're gonna have one over V on the x-axis. If you're unsure where I got this from, just uh, 
please just rewind the video just a couple of minutes and uh, you are going to be able to hear that explanation again. Okay folks, let's have a look at part B. We have a gas cylinder, internal volume of 0.05 cubic meters, contains compressed air at 21 degrees C and a certain pressure. You've got the molar mass of air. Calculate the number of moles of air in the cylinder. Okay, well, this question seems to be a straightforward application of PV is equal to NRT. We know that, we know that because we're given the pressure we're also given the, uh, the the volume. We know what R is. That's given in our formula booklet, 8.31, and we know the temperature. We just need to be careful uh, not to forget to convert that temperature to Kelvin. Okay, well, um, let's first of all rearrange for N because that's what we're looking for, the number of moles. So N is going to equal PV, and uh, we're going to divide that by RT. Now what we need to do then is start plugging in some values so we know that the pressure that's uh, given to be 1.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. Then we're going to multiply by the volume which is already in um, an SI unit so that's perfect 0 0.050 cubic meters we're going to divide that by the gas constant which is 8.31 and we're going to multiply by the temperature remember T is given with the symbol T not theta so we definitely need to make sure we convert that to the SI unit which is Kelvin so 8.31 multiplied by 273 plus 21. I'm just going to highlight that uh, 273 because that's uh, really, really important over here. So that's 273. And if we plug those numbers into a scientific calculator, we're going to get 246 for the number of moles. In this question, we're working up to two significant figures, as you can see here. So um, the number of moles is 250, up to two significant figures. Okay, well, next one, the mass of air in the cylinder. Well, we already know that we have uh, 250 um, moles so all we need to do is uh, just multiply that number by the uh, by the molar mass so all we need to do is uh, use our answer from before uh, which is 250 up to two significant figures and we're going to need to multiply that by the molar mass which is 0 0.029 and uh, what we're going to get if we multiply those two numbers is 7.3 kilograms so 7.3 kg uh, remember if i have my number of moles and i know um, how much how many kilograms each one of those moles is just straightforward multiplication gives you the answer pretty quickly quite a common question i get was would i get the same amount of marks if i did, uh, let's say 246 multiplied by 0 0.029 and the answer is yes you would have gotten the, uh, the, the, the same amount of marks in this case that would have given you 7.1 uh, kg so either one of those uh, would have uh, would have been totally fine. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video about uh, Boyle's Law if there are any questions uh, please uh, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them as fast as possible. Thanks!